We're Trent and Allie, and we knew ahead of time that this will be a learning experience. <laughs> We're in the remote mountains and always respectful of the incredible wildlife around us. But that still didn't prepare us for one of the most shocking run-ins we've ever had. And I hear Lika go, woo! And maybe like 15 or 20 feet behind Lika, I see another set of eyes. Subscribe and come along today as we get one step closer to move in. That would be fine if my corner beads didn't look like caca poo poo. <laughs> and have ourselves the scare of the century. Trent comes inside, he's like, there's a mountain lion outside, oh my gosh. What's up guys and good morning. We have another action packed day ready to be undertaken by Allie, I, and Brandon. So a lot of people used to give me crap because I used to say Brandon and me, or, or I used to say me and Brandon, right? Is that the wrong way to say it? Me and Allie are gonna do this, or me and Brandon are gonna do this, and a lot of people corrected me and they were like, it's Allie and I are going to do this, or it's Brandon and I. And I've actually done my best to change this like grammatical error, grammatical, grammatical Grammatical, gosh, I'm not a, I'm not an English major. Um, I've done my best to actually change this form of speech, and I think I've done a really good job. But there's probably a very other small detail that most of you probably know, and I don't know. And that's where, if I'm saying Brandon, I, and Allie, or Brandon, Allie, and I, or do I say Brandon, me, and Allie, me, Brandon, and... I goes at the end. I goes at the end. Anyway. Brandon, Allie, and I are going to be undertaking a pretty big deal today. We actually went and picked up our friend Tim's trailer again. We have a lot of drywall scraps. We have a lot of garbage that's lying around. We're gonna load that all up into the trailer today. We're gonna head to the dump, and then I have been doing a lot of research. If you guys caught our last episode, you probably saw me in an utterly defeated state of mind where I was having a very tough time because I tried to put some corner beads on. Maybe this is like a totally legitimate first coat, but like it looks really, really bad. I did a really bad job and when we go inside, I'll show you what they look like. They're, they're not good. And there's just some key details that I didn't like know and I, I know now. And so I'm gonna give it another attempt and hopefully they turn out a lot better. So we actually picked up this trailer from Tim and it was already full from a construction worker that had been working at his house and I had told him, hey, I'll take it to the dump and then I'll come back and pick up our stuff and take it to the dump. And we drove all the way to the dump, which is like almost an hour away and they were closed <laughs> for like whatever. I don't even know why there's a piece of paper on the front of the dump like <laughs> gate that said, we will be closed today. I was like, great. <laughs> Would've been nice to know an hour ago before I left to come here. So we brought it back. There seems to be enough room in here. I think we can get most of this drywall in there and get it like safely covered and then and take it to the dump. So I guess now we just gotta shove it a in. bunch of drywall into the dump. I'm waiting for the curtain call. Guess I want it all. All right, so we got the trailer loaded down. We have a lot of stuff in the bed. I gotta fix this box so it doesn't blow away. But the trailer is like super full and the gross vehicle weight rating on this trailer is 14,000 pounds and the trailer itself is 4,400 pounds. So we've got, we've got you know, nine or 10,000 or like four to five tons worth of available cargo back there. And I doubt there's five tons worth of stuff in that trailer. So I think that we are good. We're not overloading the trailer. The truck is probably gonna struggle a little bit, but that's why we have this truck is to make it struggle. Uh, I think Allie just ran inside to maybe get ready to go. We're gonna head to the dump. a ton is the charge for construction waste here at the dump and it's the most expensive of the things that you can drop off here and so we're trying to decide how much we think it's gonna cost for like the load that we have right now and I think the last two times that we've come it's been like 
between like 25 and 35 bucks like each time okay. and the trailer has never been like really packed full like it feels really heavy right now um what's your number i'm guessing uh i'm gonna say 70 bucks wow dang that was my guess really <laughs> we'll go 90. 90? 90? 90. i'll go 80. 80. All right. split the difference right? closest number doesn't matter if it goes over it's gets a free number. starbucks it's Bagel. A bagel, yeah. French toast bagel. <laughs> Hello. How you doing? Good. What you got? Uh, just a lot of construction waste. A lot of construction. Yep. What's in the bags? Construction waste. It's all just, yeah, just bagged it up. Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna follow the road up and into the left. Okay. Everything goes in there. Okay. Oh, okay. Got it. Then I'll see you back down. All right. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. finagling than I had hoped. The uh, other contractor that's doing some work for Tim was using this before and they, they threw a couple box springs in there. Mm. And so like with all the drywall and other stuff in the box springs, when it tried to slide out of the back door, the box springs got wedged. So Brandon and I just had to climb in there and rip those out and then it was a smooth exit from there. Good thing you guys are so strong. <laughs> now we get to pull down here and see who won the price is right. <laughs> All right, so technically I won. What was What's it? What's this technical stuff? They charged me for two mattresses. Oh. And they're eighteen dollars each. Oh. So it was ninety-five dollars. Oh. I was, I was like, I was like, oh, it's a lot, huh? And he's like, he's like, yeah. He's like, you had two mattresses in there. And I was like, no. I was like, they're actually box springs because I know mattresses mm -hmm. have to be disposed of in a proper way. Right. But those are just like Wood. two by fours and fabric yeah and so i was like no i was like they're not mattresses so i like argued with him for a minute so he's like you tell you what i'll give you one of them for free <laughs> i was like sure <laughs> so it ended up being 78 dollars. wow but without the mattresses it was 59 bucks okay wow. we all won and we're all gonna get bagels we made it to the dump we unloaded everything eventually we all got french toast bagels very, very happy about that. And look at our beautifully clean house. There's a bag of garbage right there. We'll just always have garbage. There's no way to get away from that. But so much room for activities. It's awesome. Now yeah, we're gonna happy. get back to Trent's favorite activity, mudding the corner bead on just a couple different spots in the house. We've actually minimized where we're gonna put them. And I think it's gonna make our life so much easier. So we had a lot of people, I mean a lot of people say, don't case your windows out with drywall. UV damage, water damage, durability, dogs, nails, all these things. And so we heard them, we were like, all right, let's put the same material that we're gonna put on the countertops, let's put that in the bottom of the windowsills and then dog nails and all the you know water dripping down, everything will be fine. The sides and the top will still do in drywall. Well, then I started trying to put on corner beads. <laughs> and if we're gonna do drywall in the windowsills, we have to put a corner bead on both sides and the top of every single window in the house. Now, that would be fine if my corner beads didn't look like caca poo poo. <laughs> they look so, so bad. Like I did that first coat upstairs. I'm not even gonna show you guys because I'm <laughs> so embarrassed by it. We may as well just tear this house down. I don't wanna do any more corner beads than I absolutely have to. So we've come to the conclusion then we're gonna rip all the drywall out of the window sills, but not until after we get our final inspection. So when we get our final inspection and we can move in, then we're gonna pull the drywall out of the actual window sills and trim them out with wood, which will be much easier, much cleaner, and I have a lot of experience working with wood. I, <laughs> way more than drywall. So no more corner beads in the window sills. There are about six or seven locations around the house other than window sills and door jams that have there. A corner bead. There. One is there. One is here. There's one on the ceiling. There. There's one right there. There's one upstairs. And then there's a couple on the half wall. We're going to do it all right now. We're going to do it all right now. And this one right here, whoever decided that it was okay for me to put this power outlet box that close to this tape seam and that corner bead. And the fact that when you walk in the front door, all you're going to see is my giant 
kakapupu right there, giant mistake. Not happy about that. But it was you. It's fine, it was me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I, there's nothing left to do but to just try for the second time to put on a corner bead, but I've done a little bit more research and I think that I've got some of the kinks worked out. So we're gonna give it a try. Oh, good, it's looking already. Yeah, actually. Wow, you learned a lot. <laughs> that looks way better than last Just time. Just kidding, this video was filmed a year ago and I've actually been, I've been mudding the entire time. Maybe we will do corner beads on the whole Oh house. my gosh, how is this possible? If you didn't catch our last episode, I will spare you the gory details, but basically Trent tried some corner beads in a different location on the house and it was so bad. It turned out so rough and bumpy and uneven and there you go. Sorry, I mean, you can go back and watch it if you really want to see it. It's not worth showing you. It turned out terribly. And he was really down on himself because he wants to make this house look really nice. And it's taken a long time to learn how to do everything correctly, but that's what he's done so far. And he wanted to do that with corner beads as well. And the past couple of days, the research he's put in has really paid off. I think I kind of explained this a little bit in the last video when I was feeling extremely defeated after trying to mud those corner beads. And it's because we like hustled and finished taping mm. the entire house. And like once the house was done being taped, then it was like, let's try and mud these corner beads. And it was just like, I was exhausted and yeah, over it. Yeah. And, and now it's like a fresh day. This is the first corner bead, so I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> I think it looks really good. Yeah? I think it's like turning out really nicely. I'm super impressed that like my second go is just like a <laughs> so hundred much times better. better. Yeah. <laughs> Feathered edges and everything. Other than the fact that Lika rammed her collar into the mud right here, this one looks incredible. It really does, yeah. It's just funny that we're like, nope, we're not doing like the, the, windows. the corner beads on 80% of the house anymore. And then all of a sudden like the corner beads are amazing, so. Maybe we should do them on the rest of the house, but we're not gonna, because we're gonna trim them out with wood, make it look real nice. And maybe the wood will actually end up matching the ceiling, or maybe mm. it'll just be white. I don't know. We're gonna cross that bridge when we get to it. But I am really happy that the corner beads are turning in a lot nicer. And uh, with the snap of our fingers right then, we've got the first coat on the two half wall corner beads right here, the corner bead upstairs. And now we gotta move down to the main level because it's all done up here. Wow. I go straight from the bank, gassing up the tank, cranking up the radio, playing old Hank. And All right, well, that turned out about a hundred times better and easier than I thought. <laughs> look at that. It looks really good. So the bedroom windows are the ones that look the absolute worst. Those corner beads are complete trash and they go all the way to the floor. So they're kind of like, a different type of window. All the other windows will be encased in wood. Those ones will be encased in drywall. And uh, yeah, it's just gonna, it's just gonna look a little bit different. And hopefully, I can smooth everything <laughs> out, and make it look nice by like the second or twenty seventh coat, or however many it takes. I don't know. I'm really glad that we got all of those knocked out. The only corner bead that we really have left to put the first coat on is this right here. I need to hang a corner bead on there. Cool. And I think. Now that I've mastered the vertical corner bead, I can attempt the horizontal corner bead. How about those corner beads though? Dude, my husband is a professional drywaller. <laughs> I don't know if you knew. They look so good. Yeah. I'm so excited. That's only the first coat and we're halfway there. Tomorrow we're gonna finish all the corner beads and then we're gonna start doing the flat boxes on all the flat seams. And that will probably take a few days. And then we gotta do a second coat on everything and that will take a few days. And then we gotta maybe sand, and then we'll be ready to prime. I'm really oh excited God. to prime and get some paint going. 
Oh, I could not be more excited to be done with drywall. And I think it will be really rewarding when it's done and people don't say, ooh, who did your drywall? And they're like, oh, it looks pretty good. And it's like, I did it by myself and it was my first try. And they'll say that everywhere except for our bedroom because our bedroom, the corner beads look really bad, but we'll see. Maybe I'll be able to fix them. I don't know. What I do know is we've had a long day and we're gonna see you guys in the morning. It's so good to see you. Good morning, guys. We are just getting started for the day, and before we do, I wanted to let you know today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN, a virtual private network, and basically it encrypts all of your incoming and outgoing data on any insecure network so that you're protected no matter where you are. If you're on a public Wi-Fi like a library or a McDonald's or a bus station, all of your information is accessible to hackers, and Surfshark will block any attempts that other people make to access your data so that you stay safe. It protects your passwords, your social security number, your banking information, and you can put it on all of your devices, your phones, your laptops, your computers, your tablets, your iPads, and it'll protect you no matter what. As someone who does not consider themselves very technologically savvy, I absolutely love Surfshark because I know that I'm protected no matter what. It protects me against hacking, malware, phishing attempts, identity theft, even price discrimination. If you guys want to check it out, you can click the link in our description and you're actually going to be able to get 83% off plus three additional months for free. Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. We are going to get ready and get to work. I have a little bit bit of an interesting story that happened last night that I'm going to tell you guys. So before Allie and I go to bed every night, I take the dogs outside, they roam around, they go to the bathroom. Sometimes they roam and I like stop hearing them jingle because they go and then they just like stop and it's always like a little nerve wracking and I always try to work on recalling them and getting them to come back as quick as possible. And sometimes it works better if I have treats. So last night I was like, okay, I don't want these guys going too far grabbed a bag of treats, I let them both know, like, hey, I got the treats. If you guys try to go anywhere, I'm gonna call you and tell you I'm gonna give you a treat, and then they're gonna come right back, we're not gonna have any problems. So we come outside, and we go right out in front of the Shelter Logic, and Lika and Frank both run up by the house, and they both go to the bathroom, and I'm walking out, and I'm as I'm walking out towards the road, I like kind of look back, and Frank is running down the driveway to come up next to me, and I may maybe take, you know, two more steps and I hear Lika go, woo! And I like look back up there and I'm about to tell Lika like quiet because it's like 11 o'clock or something. I don't want her like waking people up or just making a bunch of noise for no reason. And as I look back, I'm wearing a headlamp and the headlamp has like a big spotlight on it. And I already know Frank is coming down here next to me. And as I look up, Lika's looking at me and I can see her eyes glowing because it's reflecting off of the headlamp. And maybe like 15 or 20 feet behind Lika, I see another set of eyes. And it takes maybe, you know, one second for my, my brain to realize, oh, there's another animal right there. And as I see that, I can see it moving slowly sideways. And it's basically the, the outline or the silhouette of a mountain lion. And so I yell like, Lika, come! And so she sprints over to me immediately and we run inside and, and uh, Frank and Lika both run inside and it was really scary. It was like Lika was far enough away from me and close enough to this mountain lion that if this mountain lion was really hungry, uh, it, it could have snatched Lika up and she probably, she probably wouldn't have known what was happening. But the thing that is remarkable is that Lika heard the mountain lion because we have a camera outside that keeps an eye on the property for us and we have a little clip and it shows, I, I thought Lika barked at something that was over by me because when I looked at her, she was looking at me. But in the video, you can see that Lika barks and turns her back to the animal that's actually behind her. And then when I look at her, she looks at me and I call her and she runs over immediately.
whether she like sensed the fear in my voice and just knew there was something wrong or she really just wanted a treat and she knew that I had treats. I don't know, but those big ears of Lika's definitely came in handy last night and probably protected her and, and maybe Frank too because that's scary. I don't want either of our dogs to get attacked by a mountain lion. But uh, yeah, we had a little rush of adrenaline last night right before <laughs> we went to bed. And then of course after that, Trent comes inside and he's like, there's a mountain lion outside! Oh my gosh! And I'm like, what are you talking about? Where are the dogs? And both dogs are in here and they seem pretty calm. They're not super freaked out. And Trent's like, let's go outside! I'm like, what are you talking about? You can't go back outside. And he just like peeks outside and spots the, uh, the headlamp and to shine on the area next to our house by the deck and you can hear this like soft padding, crunching noise of an animal just slowly walking. But it's not like an elk or a moose, it's like padding on the leaves and it's a big animal. I couldn't really, I couldn't see the eyes, but you could just like hear the movement and know that there's something out there you do not want to mess with. And that is another reason to have a very strong recall with your dogs, to always be aware of where your dogs are, and to just uh, know the dangers of living out in the wild or camping or being out in the wild. These animals exist. It's amazing that they're so close to us and it's terrifying at the same time. And we just want to take all the precautions to make sure everyone is safe and no dogs get eaten in the process. I, it was uh, really intense and hopefully we don't have to have that type of encounter again. I mean, luckily the animal is not like hunting us. We, the dogs just sprinted outside to go to the bathroom and they happened to run right over where the animal was. So it was just unlucky. Anyway, we have to get back <laughs> to working on this house. And yesterday we had some amazing progress and really, really good success putting in a lot of these corner beads. I just have the ceiling corner beads and then one more corner bead by the stairs to put on today. And I'm hoping that that will go relatively fast um from what i've seen online it can go really fast so i'm gonna <laughs> just assume that we're gonna be able to do it as good as the guys online we're gonna go inside and we're gonna get to work All the corner beads are on. All the seams are saved. Um, Brandon has been going around doing a second layer of uh, mudding the screw holes. And now is a very big moment. We're gonna move on to taping the flat seams. Now, I bought all these drywall tools and I've been getting some, I've been getting some guff in the comments <laughs> of people saying like, they saw the bazooka and they were like, Trent, you need to learn to run before you learn to blast off. <laughs> and like, I totally agree. It would be a way better trajectory for me to learn to tape an entire house with just hand tools and the basics before moving on to like the advanced like mechanisms. But I'm not learning on this house with the basic tools because it will turn out like crap and it will take a really long time. <laughs> so I'm using the best tools that I can get to try and make the, the fastest and the best finish possible. So normally you put mud on, you put the tape, you embed the tape, and then you do like a little skim coat over and pull all the mud out. You let that dry and then you start floating or doing your passes of mud or skim coating over the tape. Because if we just painted this right now, it would look very different here than right here. Yeah, of course. And there's, I mean, obviously screw holes and stuff, whatnot. So then normally you would get a big mud knife like this and you would bend the mud knife mm. and feather the edge on the bottom and then the top of each side of the tape until you kind of like build and feather your skim coats out to be like a big wide section and it's just perfectly feathered and it looks amazing. We're not doing that because that would take a really long time and feathering the edges on the corner beads has led me to believe that it would not look good and we'd be doing a lot of sanding if I did all this by hand. <laughs> So we have the next best thing. Bazooka number two. Bazooka number two. <laughs> no, this is called a flat box. You drag that along the wall and it makes a perfect little uh, 
But does it make a feathered edge? Is it tapered? It feathers, yeah, this is, this is arched it's very a, okay, minimally. Okay. So this actually feathers both Four edges years. at the same time ah. and makes everything nice and smooth. This will be a learning experience. <laughs> and like all the previous learning experiences, we're gonna start under the stairs in the basement. <laughs> we're gonna see how this goes. <laughs> Flat box is like, I think it's doing its job. I don't really know. Maybe I'm just doing a bad job. I think like most things, there's just some, there's some nuance to this and I'm new at the nuance and I'm not doing that great, but uh, I got ambition and determination and the right tool for the job. So let's see what happens. All the furniture that I've been looking at online is out 10 to 12 weeks, sometimes even longer. So I'm starting to get a little worried that if our goal is to move in sometime between October and November, hopefully on the earlier side, um, we would like to have a bed at least, or like maybe a dresser to, to move into. So I'm looking at furniture and trying to map out exactly the dimensions and what looks good so that I can place a couple orders because of course, like everything else, there's a furniture shortage. So this is option number one. So the bed would be on this wall and then two nightstands on either side of it, which I think would look really good in here. The problem is because there's no closets, because we were idiots and didn't plan for any closets, we need two big armoires or something that can hold each of our clothing storage, as well as baby storage, because we don't have a nursery. So. The bassinet will go next to the bed, but we need a small like baby dresser changing table in here as well. I think my desk will go in here as well. So there's a lot of uh, Tetrising of furniture and trying to figure out how to fit everything and make it look good and not cluttered. Anyway, that's option number one. Option number two, I've changed some things around. Now the bed is here facing the windows, also very pretty. And in the corner would be one armoire on this side and then just the nightstand in that corner, a nightstand on the other side of the bed. But then we still need one more like wardrobe because Trent and I accumulate clothing. So there would be one other armoire over here, maybe like a rocking chair and a small baby dresser along the half wall. The only problem is that this eliminates my office, which used to be in the pantry that got moved because Trent needed a pantry, which I agree with. And now there's a baby, so the baby is moving my office, which I'm excited about, so it's okay. So let me know, what do you guys think? Option number one or option number two for the furniture layout in our bedroom. The couches and the living room and stuff I'm less concerned about. We can live on the floor for a while, it's not a big deal. But I would really like our bedroom to at least be furnished when we move in before the baby comes. So let me know your thoughts and uh, Maybe I can place some orders and buy some furniture soon. Brandon actually used to make cabinets for a living and like closets and stuff. So we were actually just discussing how to make a really cool big um, like wardrobe armoire thing in that corner that was wide enough that it could hold both me and Trent's clothes. So we don't need to have two wardrobes or armoires or whatever. We could just have all of our clothes in one section in that corner. And that would free up a lot of space over here for the baby dresser and changing table and then like a rocker or glider or something over here. So it's coming together, I'm starting to see it. It has been quite a few hours. We've been steadily working hard. I got a lot of the first coat of the skim coats going over the tape done. Um, pretty much everything except for this huge wall here 
uh, on the ground I got down there, but not up here, and then this part of the house. And that's just the first coat. And once I get done with the first coat, then I think I have to do the second coat on the corner beads, second coat on the tape, and maybe it'll be good with the second coat. Nice. And I know all the drywall guys are laughing right now because <laughs> it's probably going to take three or four coats. And that could literally take a month to do all of that. So I uh, am going to go and get the rest of this mud cleaned up and we're probably going to call it a day. We had a great day today. Did we? I mean, no, but we got a lot done. Yes. And I'm not like as happy as I could be about how the like flat boxes were going. But when I got done and I looked back at what had been done, it was like, that all looks actually pretty good. Good. And I think that like, as long as each stage, I can do it pretty good, the rest we can probably hide with paint. <laughs> Or I'd like to believe that we're going to be able to hide it with paint. We won't know until we paint. And then it'll be like, oh, should have hired somebody. <laughs> That's okay. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed coming along on today's adventure. If you did, make sure you show us by giving us a big thumbs up on today's video. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Click the link in our description to check them out. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Adios.